Hi, this is Shadi. This video wouldn't have been possible without a hero with a thousand holds. Their link for their channel will be down below, so thank you. So what we will do today is discuss the Irish Collar and Elbow, which is a grappling art from Ireland, very prestigious with a lot of similarities to Kodokan Judo. What I will do in this video is run through briefly the history of the art and compare grouping of course throws and talk about the effort that's being done today for the revival of this art because with the start of the 20th century this art almost faded into oblivion but thankfully we had a lot of record to know that it existed and it was very popular now when it comes to the history of grappling in Europe and in Ireland um, it dates back thousands of years at least 6,000 years um, you can see here from these murals and these sculptures of overhooks and underhooks and just men grappling fiercely. But um, when it comes to the Irish collar and elbow, 18th and 19th century was a high time for Irish collar and elbow. Competitions were all over the place. It was something that's very important for young boys growing up to learn. The gripping, it's stable grips as the name suggests on the level of the elbow and the collar and from there you proceed to do a lot with your legs and your hips so it was very ashiwaza oriented much like uh, inner mongolian boh but that does not mean that grip fighting does not exist you see in judo grip fighting is a very vital part of it a lot of strategies revolve around the gripping how to break grips how to dominate with your grips how to defend against certain grips this excerpt here you're seeing is uh, courtesy of fighting films with Inoue Kose's DVD link will also be in the description so uh, whether it is Korean shiram or any belt wrestling or jacket wrestling with staple grips it does not mean that there is no grip fighting going on it might seem that uh, it is 50 50 for the outsider but you're constantly looking to establish your grips far more than the other guy that's gripping you or your opponent in order to throw them. It happens a lot in Japanese judo. A lot of the times it looks 50-50 when in fact it is not. You are still trying to create some sort of dominance with your grips before you throw them. And I would say Irish collar and elbow is no exception. So to say that there is no grip fighting altogether in Irish collar and elbow, I would say this is not uh, true. So why did it uh, almost go into oblivion for a few reasons the first one being the high level of immigration that happened during the 19th century uh, towards the west particularly the americas and of course the great famine which heavily affected the number of practitioners of irish collar and elbow so people had uh, different priorities to take care of you know, a stable society like the Tokugawa uh, period, the Edo period of Japan contributed to the rise of a lot of uh, jujitsu schools and practice for recreation and competition. But during wartime, it is different. Um, it serves different purpose. But immigration and famine, of course, uh, gave people a different reason for them to do other things like survive. So another um, reason is, of course, the presence of other arts like catch wrestling and these no hold barred, no holds barred uh, matches, which seemed far less restrictive than Irish collar and elbow, which seeks to put someone on three points, which is either two hips, one shoulder or two shoulders, one hip. And, you know, doing something like catch and no holds barred fights and boxing and pugilism seemed far more fun much like today a lot of people don't want to practice judo because of a lot of the rules concerning safety and the expression um, they want to do something less restrictive like mma nogi jujitsu and wrestling and combine all these and actually go into the octagon and train so irish collar and elbow suffered the same thing but back in the day even in japan if you ask a lot of people they would say mma is becoming much more uh, popular even noki jiu-jitsu and gracie jiu-jitsu so 
Today, there is a revival of the art and you see competitions happening, which is something very refreshing because I want to see all these folk style wrestling still being practiced and still having competitions, not only Mongolian Boch or Judo or Sambo or wrestling, but all these folk style wrestling hosting their uh, own competitions and having their own training and preserving their own culture, their own curriculum, their own techniques. Now, when it comes to the curriculum and techniques, here is my question. These people that you see here in front of you, many of them have different grappling backgrounds as shared by um, the channel A Thousand Holds, A Hero with A Thousand Holds. So my question is this, Are is there a particular curriculum with very detailed techniques about the arts, how to sweep, etc.? Or are these people just coming from judo, from sambo, from jujitsu and practicing according to the rules of Irish collar and elbow because that's very important just like you saw with the illustrations at the beginning of the video it is very important you know just like I talk about technical heritage in judo it's also very important in all the other cultures around the world and I want to see all these folks are wrestling still being practiced and not just doing judo MMA jiu-jitsu sambo wrestling the world is far more richer but they seem to be very popular and very dominant because they're very effective and with all the values that they hold. But it doesn't mean that these arts like Irish collar and elbow do not hold any value. Of course, the most popular throw being the flying mare, which I would say the closest thing to a serenage or morote serenage. It is an absolutely devastating uh, throw to perform. Uh, if you don't know how to fall, you will suffer greatly. Just ask my right knee just ask the countless uh, head injuries the countless busted groins if you don't know how to fall this is a very devastating throw and i would understand why it is it was very famous for an art like irish collar and elbow where the grips are very stable so this is uh, the video that i wanted to talk about um, these arts that they should be preserved, not just judo, jujitsu, wrestling, uh, sambo, etc. Uh, MMA is very popular, and I understand that, but this does not mean that these arts are ineffective, even though they might seem uh, to have a narrower curriculum. It does not mean that they're ineffective. Just ask the guys in the grasslands in Mongolia, uh, grappling, or the sumo wrestlers, or the judokas. Or the Greco-Roman wrestlers that cannot even use foot sweeps uh, in their curriculum. Ask them if their art is ineffective. I highly doubt it. They can easily take care of themselves in the streets. But I understand the lure of MMA and the no-holds-barred fights. But that does not mean that these arts are ineffective or they should be less appreciated. Here you see in this 2019 meetup, people from various backgrounds like jiu-jitsu. You can see the jiu-jitsu jackets, the jiu-jitsu belts, and uh, the jiu-jitsu gi in and of itself being worn. Very different from the first example of the competition where the jacket was very much Irish-like. So... Um, I'm asking a hero with a thousand holes or anyone familiar with this art if there's a collection of books where I can find them or any PDFs that can be found or a book that I can actually purchase. I have no problem with that as well. What I'm trying to find is something that's unique to that art, something that's different, that cannot be found uh, in Kodokan Judo. And that's my next step when it comes to different arts, comparing them like I found a slew of footage uh, of Greco-Roman pins, reversals, turnovers, and even throws that are not found in the Gokyo, and I'm, and I will share it with you very shortly. Um, and when I I want to do the same with other uh, disciplines like the Irish collar and elbow. So if you have any suggestions, let me know down below of books. And of course, don't forget to check out uh, a hero with a thousand holes channel, and consider supporting me on Patreon for exclusive content. But don't worry, the main content will always be here on this channel. Um, so your support would mean greatly. This was Shadi and thank you for listening.